we, what we've been leading up to is differ. I'm recording. What we've been leading up to is differentiability. All right. So there are a few scenarios based on the formality uh, and the definitions that we've used to determine uh, how we could take a limit if a limit exists. And since our derivative to some degree is based on limits uh, and uh, two-sided limits, one-sided limits, and then we'll talk about derivatives. Uh, a derivative is really um, it's it's like you, you can have like a two-sided derivative although I've never seen a textbook label it that way but basically there are times in which based on the uh, formal definitions that we just cannot take a derivative at a point on a function and so what we're going to talk about today is how f prime of a might fail to exist and so I have some examples here a corner is one particular uh, scenario where you could do what we call a one-side derivative, but the two-side derivatives simply do not exist. So, for example, I have on the screen here, this is the absolute value function. And what happens is, is that I have a slope of negative 1 as I approach 0 from negative infinity, but then I have a slope of positive 1 as I approach 0 from positive infinity. The problem is, is that the left-hand side of derivative is not equal to the right-hand side of derivative. And to, uh, informally, or maybe in plain language, is, is, you know, our derivatives are based on limits, and the, the limits are different. And so you could think of it in terms of like a limit. I simply cannot take the slope. Truthfully, that the slope, when you look at this, the tangent line at this point would be y equals 0 if we were to like just graphically graph or or based on what a tangent line is really the tangent line if we think about it it forms a 90 degree angle with the curve at the curve okay or not a 90 degree angle how it, it it's a 90 degree angle to the normal and in other words, your tangent line is perpendicular to the normal, and ba because it's perpendicular to the normal, it only touches the, the, the curve at one point. Well, here's the thing. I could draw infinitely many tangent lines that touch at only one point. But then how do I establish what the normal line is? The normal line, the normal line is perpendicular to the curve at that point. And then we're saying that the tangent line is perpendicular to the normal line. So when you look at this point, it's very difficult to figure out what is perpendicular. Now you would assume that if you were to draw a line, in other words, the y-axis is probably the normal, if you were to think about it graphically. But how do I prove that algebraically? right? And so another scenario where that happens is what we call a cusp. Truthfully, I call them all cusps because that's what my calculus professor said, but there is a difference between a corner and a cusp. But a cusp is a similar concept. Here I have a curve that comes to a point, and then I have another curve. So this is like the absolute value bracket of uh, some sort of polynomial. That's where you s sort of see this behavior take place. And so this is not necessarily a corner, but we call it a cusp. I call them all cusps. So I'll say this, at, like when you go to do your homework, and you say, Mr. Adams, I can't do it. I'll say, well, it's a cusp. You can't take a derivative at a cusp. Okay. Well, on that same notion, algebraically, when x equals 0 on this particular line, we have what we call a vertical tangent. Right? If at, when x equals 0, y equals 0 on this curve, the normal line intersects the curve at a 90 degree angle, which would be basically the x-axis, or y equals 0. So then the tangent line would be perpendicular to that, which would be basically the y-axis. That one's kind of hard to do algebraically. Okay? And so what happens is vertical lines only occur when the slopes of the secant lines either approach infinity or negative infinity from both sides. So when we look at the graph of the cube root of x, that's where we're going to run into an issue. Another issue is discontinuity. We've been talking about discontinuity since the first week of school, and here's why. 
I can only take the derivative, which is going to be the slope of the tangent line, which is the rate of change of the curve at that particular point, of a continuous function. So in the fourth example here, I have a discontinuous function. I can take what we call a one-sided derivative. In other words, I can, uh, I can figure out what the tangent line is here as we approach zero from negative infinity. However, when I approach zero from positive infinity, I'll get a different answer. Well, in this case, I wouldn't. I get the same answer. The slope is equal to zero, right? Which is the derivative, but it's not a two-sided derivative. Okay. So the most common application for this is like a unit step function or a floor and ceiling function or the greatest integer function. So what does that mean? Well, basically, in the real world, we have all kinds of scenarios where we have to take derivatives. And I have a bunch of graphs here where we would take the derivative, and I have three different graphs, and as you can see, just by looking at them, there's no cusp, there's no corner. They're continuous function from what we can tell, uh, at least on the domain of the window that we see in our selection here. And if I think about it in my mind where the tangent line is going to lie, I don't really see a point in which I'm going to have a vertical tangent line. So I can only assume that these three functions are going to, I'm going to be, they're differentiable across the domain as, the relative domain as defined by what we see in the window. So for example number one, now here's, here's a little bit different scenario. It wants us to find all points of the domain where f is not differentiable. Well how do I do that? Well let's look at the graph. I could tell you by, I'm pretty sure uh, that it's at uh, x equals 2, but let's double check, right? Now, how is it that Mr. Adams can rattle it off the top of his head? Well, I already know that the parent function of the absolute value of x has a vertex or a corner at the point 0, 0. So when I look at this x minus 2, that means that we are going to shift the graph two units to the right, so the vertex will be at x equals 2, and then we shift it three units up. So technically, the vertex occurs at 2 comma 3. And that's where, where f is not differentiable. But let's graph it just to make sure that Mr. Adams isn't just uh, saying a bunch of fancy words. And you guys, are you even paying attention to what I'm saying? Yeah. OK. Do you have any questions about what all this stuff I said? How do you not envision the tangent line? How do I envision it? Well, it takes, it takes a lot of practice. I've been teaching calculus for like 10 years, right? So what I, what I do, let's, let's look at the graph and we'll figure it out, OK? Um, here's the weird thing. I have to teach you the tangent line first, right? And then um, what is the tangent line? Well, the normal line is if I go anywhere along this curve and I draw a straight line, that's perpendicular to the curve at that point. Now there's, yeah, that's the normal line. And then the tangent line is just perpendicular to that. And the consequence of that is that the tangent line should only touch the curve one time. Okay? Unless it's a straight line. Okay? But really what you're doing is you're just going to draw a line like here, let's look at this real quick because that's a good, that's a great question and it'll help us to understand example number one. In my mind, what I'm thinking constantly is, I see this, I see this. What, what's so funny about constantly? You are just constantly always, thinking, thinking, always, forever and ever, never not thinking. Yeah. About the team. Well, I just keep thinking every time you say corner, I just think no, he puts baby in the corner. So somebody said that to me the other day, and I was like, "What? What is that reference for? What did I? I know what it's from, but I was, I, well, I was talking to a, I, I think I was talking to a parent about something, or I was talking to somebody about Mrs. Adams or something like that, and they said nobody puts baby in the corner, and I was like, I, it was some, it was some random thing. I don't know. If I think of it, I'll tell you later. So, so look at this, 
look at this graph, okay? This is, now this is just a visual approximation, but I'm thinking that's pretty much the tangent line. And so as I come around the graph, the tangent line is kind of perpendicular to the normal line. So what's the normal line? The normal line is this. It's always going to intersect the curve at like a 90 degree angle. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. And so down here, this is the normal line, right? And if I come over here, this is, this is going to be my normal line at the point of intersection because it's got to be a 90 degree angle to the curve. And so as you come around the curve, your normal line changes. Do you see how that works? So the tangent line is always perpendicular to that. So at this particular point, that's kind of the tangent line. But as I come around the curve, the tangent line changes. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So now when I look at this graph, for example, number one, I've got to think to myself, what would the tangent line look by, like as I come around the curve? Well, is there a point in which it won't work? So this is, this is a, if, if I look at the graph, and I'm going to come in a little bit, I'm going to zoom in right here. And here's the problem. As I come along the graph from negative infinity, in other words, as I approach x equals 2, the tangent line is basically the slope of the line. Okay? So if I come towards 2 from the left-hand side, my slope is negative 1. But if I come from the other direction, my slope is positive 1. And you say, Mr. Adams, how do I know this? Well, if I plug in 0, y equals 5. So if my slope is negative 1, that means I come down 1, go over 1. So the next point on the line should be 1, 4. And then 2, 3. But if I come from the other direction, let's say I come from 4, now my slope is positive. So if I go back to 2, my slope is positive, so 3, 4, 4, 5. I go up 1, over 1. Well, the slope at this direction does not equal the slope in this direction right here at the corner. So where's my problem? The corner. 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 I call it, I call, I'm going to try to remember to call it corner, but I always call it a cusp. So what does that mean? Well, according to the definition, it's not differentiable. It's The function is not differentiable at x equals 2. Why? Because there's a corner there. Now there's a fancy algebraic way to show that. We're just going to skip that for now. Any questions on that?